really interesting fight at featherweight we have the scrapper chas skelly taking on pretty boy jamal emmers and matt for both of these guys They've taken on some good fighters oh, yeah. in the past. I mean, for Jamal Emers, that was always a story. This is a guy that was just outside of the UFC. It was only a matter of time before we got to see him. He main evented LFA 81 against Rafael Barboza. Punched his ticket to the UFC with a win there. He unfortunately lost split decision to Giga Chikadze. I went back, MMA decisions, didn't watch the fight. And it was a close one, but Giga just outpointed him in that one. I mean, I know the takedowns were definitely the story for Jamal Emers. They were definitely the story for him against Vince Cachero, who came in on short notice. Originally, it was supposed to be Jamal Emers taking on Mavzar Evloev. And really, that's been kind of the story. He's supposed to take on Evloev, Evloev, uh, you know, out of that fight because of a motorcycle accident. Then he was supposed to take on, uh, it was Timur Valiev, rather. Valiev out of that fight, so in steps Vince Cachero. And so he picks up a win there. He just kind of rinse and repeat, able to get the win there. And that's kind of the thing out of these pinnacle MMA guys. And I say that, but that's where uh, you're going to find Jamal Emers. But training with the likes of Darian Caldwell, you're going to see Bobby Green there as well. Like a lot of guys that can get it done on the feet. But for Darian Caldwell, some of the best pure wrestling that we see in MMA in the lower weight classes. But again, for Jamal Emers, uh, win over Jay Cuccinello, Sial Machado, uh, who else? Chris Avila, you know, the guy that trains with the Diaz brothers and we've called out in the past. He also has a win over Corey Sandhagen. So that's kind of the story on Jamal Emmers. And we'll get into the technique. But for Chaz Skelly, he's been in the UFC for the longest time. Came in from Bellator in 2014. Loose to Mursad Bektik. Picks up wins over Tom Ninamaki, Sean Soriano, Jim Ayler's, Edemilson Souza. Loses to the damage. Darren Elkins picks up big wins. Listen, a 19-second win over Maximo Blanco. You go back and look at that guy's record. A little bit insane. And then he picks up a big win over Chris Gritzmacher, a fight that wasn't even close. It was all Skelly in that fight, using that all-American NAIA wrestling chops. And Chaz Skelly, really, I know he lost to Jason Knight. He had the no contest against Bobby Moffat. Weird fights for a guy like Chaz Skelly. And then the fight against Jordan Griffin that was booked three, well, two different times. He picks up a decision win there. Probably really saved his standing in the UFC. Okay. And that's a great win to have. Because if you're Chaz Skelly, his wrestling's great. And his jiu-jitsu's pretty good too. And those are two combinations that usually you have one, but you don't have the other. Chaz Skelly has both. He's a really lanky guy for the division. Kind of wonky striker. So this makes for a great fight. Because I wouldn't say clash of styles, but these guys do fight in differing styles. Oh, 100%. And I'm really excited for this fight. Chaz Skelly is a really interesting case because I know what he does well, but I also don't really know what he does well. Yes, he can wrestle. He has good jiu-jitsu. His striking is very awkward just because he can throw quite a bit of volume. He does have that kind of odd upright BJ Penn the third time he fought Frank Edger style where he is just very, I don't know. He's got way too good a posture for my liking. But anyways, the Jason Knight fight's the one that I always go back to because that was just an awful late stoppage. And Chaz Skelly ate a lot of damage in that fight. And the other weird thing too about Skelly, you forget how long he's been in the UFC for. Like I always think of Chaz Skelly like, oh, he's been around for like, you know, he's had three, four, maybe five fights in the UFC. No, he's been in the UFC for five, six years now. He's been a veteran. He's been in there with some good guys. And you look at his losses. Yeah, he lost to Jason Knight. People only remember Jason Knight now, I guess, for being the guy who fought Artem Lobov and Bare Knuckle. But he had a nice little run in the UFC for a while. And then Darren Elkin, the damage who we all know and love so Chaz Skelly struggles with the guys who do the things that he does well he struggles with other guys who can wrestle he struggles with other guys who are good at jiu-jitsu because then they can just force the fight to be a striking exchange and for Jamal Emers we all know how good his wrestling is how good his grappling is but the easiest path to victory for Emers in this fight might just be to keep it standing because he has the one who has the wrestling defense in his back pocket. For Skelly, he will kind of give up the takedown just to have the fight be on the mat. You don't want to be on your back against a guy like Jamal Emers. I know he has good jiu-jitsu, but the ground and pound of Emers is not something that you really want to be messing around with and really testing your jiu-jitsu out against. So for Emers, if you can just defend a lot of the takedowns of Skelly, I'm not saying Skelly has bad striking by any means, but compared to the striking of Jamal Emers, I just don't know how much success he's going to be able to get on the feet. Yeah, it's going to be a really weird fight because that's the thing. For Jamal Emers, when he fights poor wrestlers, well, he's able to get the takedown quite easily. He's able to gain top position and really land a lot of shots. And that's the thing for Jamal Emers. He's one of those guys that might just kind of bully his way into position and then just start landing blows. 
For Chaz Skelly, he's going to take you down. He's going to get the back. He's going to try and get into a submission position. And again, if you look at some of those wins, Souza, rear naked choke. Tom Ninamaki, rear naked choke. You look at the fight against Blanco, Anaconda, and a rear naked against Chris Gritzmacher. Again, he just kind of had his way in that fight. The fight against Bobby Moffat that ended up in no contest, that was controversial as it was. So it was a really weird fight. It's one of those ones that do you put a lot of stock into it? I think, again, the win that he had over Jordan Griffin is a great one because Griffin is that classic, again, kind of a mirror to Chaz Skelly. Is his striking great? Not so much. Is his takedown, you know, offense great? Well, it's not too bad. His submissions are really his bread and butter. So for Chaz Skelly, again, if you look at the overall body of work, he's got a couple wins over Daniel Pineda from back in the day, a win over Ray Trujillo that we all know and love. So a, a good base and, again, 10 submission wins on the record for Chaz Skelly. For Jamal Emmers, seven by knockout, three by submission. Let's have a look over at the odds, Matt. Skelly opened a plus 120 underdog. He's now at a plus 186. If you look at Jamal Emmers, opened at a minus 140. He's now minus 232, which is absolutely insane. Again, this is one of those fights that I'd probably leave off of my card because I don't really love Jamal Emmers being that big of a favorite. But we have a look at the topology votes. We'll round this one out and see what the fans are thinking. Well, that's why we do this, Matt. This is a toss-up. 758 total votes, 64% Skelly, and 69% by decision. I always find that interesting early on that the odds are going in favor of Jamal Emmers like a landslide all of a sudden. They just continue to pour in for Jamal Emmers from a betting perspective. But the fans are going with Chaz Skelly. What's your take here? I like Emmers in this fight. I really do. And it's nothing against Skelly, but... When we do bring up that Jordan Griffin win, for me, Jordan Griffin's a great one to have in your first UFC fight, your second UFC fight, when you are still quite early on in your career. Jordan Griffin's the type of guy who we point to. It's like if Ale when Alexander Volkanovsky was making his way towards the title and you're like, oh, he fought Darren Elkins on his way up. Like, there's certain guys that you just like to see on someone's record. Jordan Griffin's one of those guys. The difference is Chess Skelly's not in his first kind of little run in the UFC. He's an established name. And the fact that he is fighting at that sort of Jordan Griffin level still at this point in the UFC is a little concerning. It's not that Jamal Emmers is going to be a top 15 forever, but I do think Jamal Emmers has a serious ceiling at 145. The fight against Chikanse was weird. It was really close. He did have the takedown. Shikaze would struck him. But those are the types of fighters that Emmers can have close fights with. And I just think his stock and Shikaze's stock, for that matter, to be a little bit higher than Skelly's. So I'll agree. The odds should probably be a little bit closer, but I do like Emmers in this fight. Yeah, I mean, you say closer, but people keep gambling on him. That's so that's, true. that's kind of the thing. And if you look at Jamal Emmers again, you look at some of the names that he was supposed to be matched up with against. Uh, Alexander Hernandez on an early way up. Uh, you look even recently, again, Derek Minner, Mazar Evlev, Timur Valiev. Like, that's the kind of stock you put in this guy. And yeah. he's winning fights before that so it's not like oh well let's just throw Jamal Emmers in there it's going to be a loss I'm sure he would have been an underdog in the Evlev fight but I do like him in this one as well because again his takedown defense isn't terrible his offense is quite good from that respect but if it's a fight that keeps standing on the feet as they say every fight starts on the feet I think Jamal Emmers has more than a good opportunity in this one so I'm going with pretty boy Jamal Emmers you're in agreement on this one oh, yeah. looking forward to it because maybe Chaz Skelly proves everybody wrong takes him down and submits him wouldn't that be an interesting wrinkle of a development and all the topology voters be right so I'm really looking forward to this fight it should be a great card you're headliner rebooked you have Curtis Blades taking on Derek Lewis we're really looking forward to that one and as we always say Matt with Fight Night Picks let's, let's get, get into it, into it.